Do you like flowers? Well, today we get to make some flowers. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and today we are continuing with our Lucky Us pillow. So today we are going to do the flowers and the vase. We need to make sure to do the flowers first. That's very important. They are dimensional flowers, and we are just going to use mylar and tulle for them. Tulle, it's that um, pretty things. Think of like ballerina skirt. <laughs> That's what I think of. Anyway, so we are going to need a size three by three and a half, one piece of mylar, three by three and a half, and then two pieces of the tool that are three by three and a half. And we're basically going to sandwich them. I'll show you step by step, but we're going to put down the tool and then the mylar and then the tool again as a sandwich and it'll make it just shimmery and iridescent it'll be very pretty so for this we are going to use wash away embroidery stabilizer i'm using the one from kimberbell this will be my first time using it you can see it's still in the package so i'm excited to give it a try we are going to use this in our hoop so that we can easily cut it and get it wet and then have it just be the flower only so you don't want to use like tear away or something that is going to stay behind it because it's a dimensional flower so we can use our four by four hoop for this part and like i said we're going to also do the vase but we're going to start with just the flowers so let's go ahead and get started on our dimensional flowers and then we'll talk about the vase next one other thing to mention is whatever color you decide to make your flowers, I'm going to use white, you want to make sure that your bobbin matches. So both thread and bobbin, same color. Important. Want to hear something really cute? So Lynn Geldmeyer saw that I always put a rubber band around my stabilizer and because I haven't invested in the um, slap bands yet. So she called my favorite quilt shop, my local quilt shop, and ordered them for me. And I just need to go pick them up. And I'm going to have slap bands on all my stabilizers now. Isn't that so cute of her? Oh, Lynn, I just love you. <laughs> pretty those are and it's not done but I wanted to point out that after you do the um, detail stitch in there we are going to lift up the first layer of tool and trim that away and then we can easily tear away the mylar that which is the middle piece and then after we do that we can trim the third layer of tool away and then we'll run the satin stitch after that are so quick and easy look at how pretty they are that mylar just makes them shimmery and glittery and cute so now that we are done with that we are going to take them out of our hoop and trim away the excess wash away stabilizer and then we are going to um, spritz them with water or put them in a little bowl of water whatever works for you and just to get that that extra wash away stabilizer off and then we will add them to our vase project next Thank you. 
All right, so once you have your dimensional flowers, there's a little si tiny small one, a medium one, and a large one. And the medium and large look very, very similar, but there's one that's just a tiny bit larger. You're gonna save the large one for our leprechaun hat later. So put that one aside and just get your small and medium dimensional flowers and keep those for our vase project. So for the vase project, it's called Clovers and Flowers and you are gonna get your supplies for that one. And let's just go over what we need for this. All right, for, don't, don't lose your mylar. That mylar is like, it's determined to get lost in my craft room. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna start with our background fabric and it is that um, aqua-ish color, light blue aqua color of a silky solid and it is going to be cut to six and a half by 10 and a half and make sure and back this with feasible stabilizer. So six and a half by 10 and a half for our main fabric, for our main background for our clover and flowers block. And then we are going to use some pine embroidery felt. It's the dark green embroidery felt and this one is cut to four by four and a half four by four and a half of the felt. Do not back this with anything. Leave it as is. Felt, some felt melts. I don't know. I think probably the craft felt would be my guess. Um, and I don't know exactly what the Kimberbell felt is made out of. I have a bunch of wool felt that I like a lot and I don't think that melts. I'm pretty sure that does not, but that craft felt, did you know the craft felt is made out of like um, those bottles, the like two liter bottles. I've heard that that's what the craft felt is made out of. And it, you can tell when you feel it, it's just not the same. So that I think is the one that melts, I, I would think so. So anyway, don't back your Kimberbell felt with um, any kind of backing. It, it probably would be fine, but just don't, you don't need it for felt. All right, so that is the pine embroidery felt four by four and a half. And then for our clovers, we're gonna use that iridescent mylar, the one that loves to try and get lost. It's like sticky. <laughs> it's not sticky, but it's um, maybe because of the Idaho dryness, everything gets um, clingy. All right, iridescent mylar, we are going to have a piece that is three by three and a half for our clovers and then for the flowers we have this light gold applique um, glitter glitter vinyl so two pieces and they are one and a half by one and a half don't back them with fusible stabilizer don't do anything to glitter vinyl but you do want to make sure to take off the topping i'm not going to sit here and try and show you whenever i try and show you on the video i can't get it off for some reason but it is easy to get off but take off the topping and we'll go over more of that when we get to that part but two two pieces one and a half by one and a half and then for our vase we are going to have vinyl so the it's um it's not clear fresh mint it's fresh mint and we just need a piece that is two and a half by four and a half one piece mine is in the packaging so make sure if you got yours as a fabric kit it probably came maybe came in a package um, so make sure to take that out but two and a half by four and a half and it is just that um, light fresh mint vinyl. All right, and then we are going to quilt this. So I am gonna use um, plaid one in the directions. I believe it says to use plaid two, which is their new one that um, there was a bundle that came out with this. So if you got that, use your plaid two. Um, I'm gonna use plaid one and you want a quilting design, any quilting design that is four and a half by eight and a half. But let me warn you, if you're using a five by seven hoop to, you, if you don't have a larger hoop, I'm gonna use my six by 10 hoop. But if you are using a smaller hoop, a five by seven hoop, you are gonna have to hoop this twice, do a double hooping. So you are gonna do a four by four and a four by four, right on top of each other, four by four and four by four. And I will try and do a video of that as well. But if you're doing that, you don't really wanna use an orange design and plaid is an orange design you would want to use any of the ones that are a standalone design. So um, if you have the CBTs, you could use um, 
the loops or the swirls or any of the designs that are in the blue category on the Kimberbell website. Any of those would work fine in a four x four twice. Um, the orange designs, as I've mentioned before, they go into the seams, which means that it would go on to your, your first hooping. When you do your second hooping, you would see some of the stitching go on top of the first hooping. So you don't wanna use an orange design for that. Um, since we are quilting, we are going to use batting. And so our final cut size of this project is four and a half by eight and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that is five by nine. Batting five by nine. I'm using warm and natural because I'm using what I have available um, for this project. So, but the Kimberbell batting is, is a very nice batting as well. And I used that for our winter pillow and that was great. All right, and then like I said, don't forget your dimensional flowers. And uh, again, quilting any design that is four by eight, or if you're using a five by seven hoop, a blue design that is four by four. So for this clovers and flowers vase block, I've been asked how to take out the quilting from underneath the vase. And that is completely optional. If you choose to do that, there are ways to do it. Um, it's not difficult, it's just time. It just takes some time to do it. Um, so I will show some options. And again, it's totally optional. Honestly, I don't personally care, but since I've been asked, I'm gonna show you how. Um, I am going to show you in two different ways on software using um, Embrilliance Essentials and their um, Stitch Simulator or on Sew so It Pro using the eraser tool. And I, I'm gonna try and do it uh, just on the embroidery machine as well. But I think it would only work on the embroidery machine if you have one of the higher end machines. Um, I think the Solaris or Luminaire or the Dream Machine, anyone that has that IQ designer, I think it's called, and I rarely use that, honestly, but um, if you can, if you have a machine that can make a stamp of it, I think that that's the way to do it, and I'll, I'll look more into that. But again, that's very optional. The vase is very thin. You can see from our piece of vinyl that's gonna cover our vase, it's just this thin little piece. So you're gonna try, if you want, you're, you would have to try and get the quilting out from inside of the vase. And again, totally optional. So anyway, I'll give some information on that. Side note, if you are doing the four by four twice, like I mentioned, you need to do a double hooping. Um, in the blue designs, I looked up a few options for you. So there is um, floral two, which is so pretty, and for a, a vase of flowers, how fun would that be? So floral two is a standalone blue design that you could do. And I wanna mention that you still wanna do the block by block method, but you want to use a blue design. So that would mean that you still have the batting and uh, placement and tack down stitches, um, but you would have a design that is not gonna overlap and go into the seams. So the other thing is you could use your clear blue tiles. If you joined me for the clear blue tiles table runner project, then you have those at your disposal and those would work really well. Clear blue tiles, the blue tiles, those would work great for this project if you need to double hoop. So again, Floral 2 is an option. Also Shamrock, um, the one that I used for my Clover um, blocks, I used Shamrock from JL Designs in Etsy. Um, and there's a link under this video for that. You could use that for this block twice. That is not gonna overlap at all. Um, and then Kimberbell has several designs that came that they came out with this year that is Shamrock one, two, three, and four, I believe. And all of those are standalone designs. So you could use any of those. There's one that says like Lucky Us and one with Shamrocks and, and there's a few. And one of them, I think, yeah, one of them is even in the bundle. If you bought the St. Patrick's Day bundle, it was plaid two and I think the shamrock one, I don't remember. I think it might be St. Patrick's Day 4. That's it. Um, and then it also has the border. So that, that design, not the plaid, but the other one, the St. Patrick's Day 4, would work great if you need to double hoop. So just giving you some options um, if you are going to double hoop for your quilting in a smaller hoop. All right, 
real quick, if you are using a smaller hoop, I'm going to give you an example. So I have my 5 by 7 hoop. I just have tearaway in here as an example, and I'm going to use felt. So what I would do, the, if you have the clear blue tiles, definitely do that. That's the smart way to go. Um, so you would use the 4x4 four four tile twice and just find the center of your fabric. I, you could iron your fabric for a nice crease. I'm just doing a finger press here as a quick example. And then also get your center this way too, actually. That would be good. So get the center of your fabric and then use your clear blue tiles to line this up just right. You want it right on that center line, both horizontally and vertically, and then mark your tile. So you would mark all these parts and don't forget to mark the edges here too because then you'll know where to line up the next one. So do it on the second one as well. Mark, mark, mark. And then when you bring this to the machine, you already know right where the center is going to be um, to put your needle on both of your four by four hooping. So that would be the easiest way. But I'll show you if you don't have the clear blue tiles, then again, you're going to want to find your center and bring it over to the machine. And I'll show you from there. All right, so I am going to choose this shamrock design by JL Designs. I added um, placement and tack down for the batting, and I showed on the very first video for Lucky Ass how you can do that easily. Um, in software, you can add a basting stitch or you can pull um, from a different design uh, placement and batting and add your quilting design to that. So, um, as I mentioned, you're, if you're going to double hoop, you want a blue design that is a standalone design like this Shamrock or one of the Kimberbell St. Patrick's Day ones or floral ones. Um, but you still want to use the block by block method so that you have the placement and tack down of the batting. And the Kimberbell designs have those included. Or if you use a design from like Etsy or designs by Juju, then you would need to add that on your own. And I showed how to do that in the first video. So I'm going to use this shamrock one and I am going to go ahead and set. So on your, just like how we do all before, so you're going to do the first few steps where you um, do the placement for the batting and then the tack down and the trim. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that part and then get to the, the quilting so that I can show you how to line it up. Okay, if you don't have the CBTs, this is the alternate way to um, double hoop. Once you have your batting uh, placement tacked down and then your placement for your main fabric, what we're going to do is you're going to take your fabric. Remember, I'm just using felt as a tester here, and I have folded it, folded it in half. And I am going to start from the bottom or the top. It doesn't matter at this point. I'll do it from the top so that you can hopefully see better. So right from the folded mark, you are going to line it right up with that batting, at the top of the batting or the bottom of the batting, depending which way that you're doing. But you really want it lined right up and centered. So you can see I've got it pretty well centered and then right on the top of that line. And then once you have that, you're gonna fold it down under your needle and tape in place if that makes you feel comfortable. Just make sure your fabric is straight and that you have it um, centered from your mark. So you could use a water soluble pen and mark your center. That would be very easy to do as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run, you can run the um, the basting stitch, personally, I would, I'm going to bypass it because I don't want it in the way. It will be harder to get the, the basting stitch out when, when you're double hooping. So I'm going to go ahead and bypass that step and go straight to the quilting design.
All right, once you have your first hooping done, we're going to just unhoop it um, and tear away the extra stabilizer, put in another stabilizer, and run through those first few steps again where we place in, and tack down our batting. But this is the first hooping. All right, once you have the uh, batting placement and tack down and the main fabric placement stitch, then you are going to easily line up your batting. Let me cut this very well. Okay. All right, so you can see, so when you, here is our, our first uh, hooping, and then when you fold it down, you can see the batting. And we are going to simply line up the batting. You can do it from the bottom or from the top, since we already did the bottom. It, it really doesn't matter. I think it'd be easiest to do it from the bottom. So I'm going to just back this up a bit. All right, so we are going to um, just line up the batting from the first hooping with the batting of the second hooping. And it's easier if you take this off the hoop off of your machine and line it up on a table and then tape it in place, but I'm gonna do it here for you. So let's see if you can see. All right, so see right here, I have the batting from the first one lined up with the batting of the second one. And then once that I have that, then I am going to just fold my fabric up, or unfold, I guess would be the right word. And I'm going to tape in place. A little bit all right and then um, like I said before I highly recommend bypassing the um, basting stitch because it will just get in your way so the basting stitch is here I am going to oh sorry I am going to click this down button if yeah down button all right and then it goes straight to the quilting design and we're gonna go ahead and run the quilting design So you can see our first hooping is here. We're doing our second hooping here. It's a standalone design and we just want it lined up with our batting. All right, when the second hooping is done, remove it from the hoop and remove the excess stabilizer. And this is, you can see, it just looks like one large hooping. No one is gonna know that you did two hoopings and worked extra hard at it. And you can see from the back, see how this lines up perfectly when you line it up batting to batting. It, just comes perfectly together. Everything is straight. It's a, it's a great, easy way to double hoop. And then you would do your clovers and your flowers on top of this.
Hey everyone, so I'm going to show you real quick how we're going to cut this. So we want our final cut size to be four and a half by eight and a half. We're going to use two of the orange pop rollers. The um, eight, what is it? Six by eight and the four by six. So start, but with the larger one, the six by eight, and you're just making sure that it's a quarter inch from the top and the bottom. Don't worry about the sides too much at this point. So a quarter inch top and bottom. I do mine upside down because then I can see the seam allowance. And then you're going to take the four by six block and put it on the inside of the other two. And then we're going to move it around to get it positioned right so that you have a quarter inch on each side. So I need it over a little bit more. All right. So a quarter inch on each side, and then we're going to get our rotary cutter and start from the left if you're left-handed, and you're going to push the um, blade into the side of the pop roller. Get down into this groove to begin with, and then hopefully my hands aren't in your way, and down into that groove, and then push along the side edge there of the ruler, right along there. And then the same thing on the other side. And then if you've got it on a rotary mat, there's a link in my in the underneath this video for the one that I use. Um, it helps to make it a little easier. Then you're going to take out that top one. You're only doing the left and right sides while both rulers are together. And then take out that uh, four by six ruler. Put that away. And now we're just going to do the top and the bottom. Again, pushing into the side from the channel. And then you're done with that ruler. Put that one away. And the top and the bottom will come off right away, but the um, sides will just have the side slits. And so what I do, you can just grab a pair of scissors and finish it off if you want. I like to use this other ruler to um, finish off the sides. And same thing with this side. And that's how easy it is to use the orange pop rollers and get it cut just right so that you've got your seam allowance on both sides. And my shirt today is actually my very favorite shirt. It is Enjoy the Ride. I added the words using the Maya font from Stitchtopia. This bicycle is from Planet Applique, if I recall. I will add a link under the video. It is literally my favorite shirt and it's probably about seven years old and I wear it all the time, but I love it. It's my favorite and it's on an anvil hooded shirt. Also my favorite, um, I will add a link to that also underneath this video. <laughs>